Yes, right. sir. Thank you very much. And Leslie's already here. prepared the safety yes, press release that goes out every year, and it'll go out tomorrow. Okay. At, at this time, uh, we're going to move down to the front, and Commissioner Wheeler, I will turn it over to you. Can we get there? Okay. Oh. Uh, I brought my little buddies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of Kanawha County Commission, it is with my honor to announce the presence of the 36th Governor of West Virginia, the Honorable Jim Justice. Hey! <laughs> Resolution honoring Baby Dog as a Kanawha County Search and Rescue first responder. Whereas the Honorable Jim Justice, Governor of the State of West Virginia, and his loyal companion Baby Dog have traveled to every corner of our great state to host community conversations, to educate voters regarding the devastating impact Amendment 2 will have on first responders and local government services. And whereas in her daily travels, Baby Dog has carefully searched out and revealed the truth about Amendment 2, which if passed will cause the removal of a constitutional protection that provides critical funding for law enforcement, fire protection, emergency medical services, and public education. And whereas by sniffing out and digging up the truth about Amendment 2, Baby Dog has, <clears throat> excuse me, has performed a significant public service for all first responders and has in fact rescued the rescuers. And whereas Baby Dog, even in the face of mounting adversity, has been unwavering and steadfast in her message to the people of West Virginia, proudly proclaiming, pause down on Amendment 2. <laughs> And therefore, be it resolved that the Kanawha County Commission hereby publicly recognizes and thanks Baby Dog for her efforts to oppose Amendment 2, and in recognition of her service to the public, hereby declares Baby Dog an official search and rescue first responder and further pronounces Baby Dog as the top dog in Kanawha County. <laughs> We have a few things for baby dogs. You don't mind, Governor. Oh, and, um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> who's got, uh, well, we've got this. Uh, Commissioner Slango, you want to show that to the Governor? I'm going to show the baby dog. <laughs> baby dog, look at this. Rock thing. City. Now, once Rock we, City, and once, you're here, Governor. Once we show baby dog this, <laughs> she's going to go completely wild. <laughs> I will promise you. We won't get any focus out of baby dog after this thing. Maybe we better just leave it right here for right now. Baby dog, I'll just kind of have my pet. She's like, oh, that's good. Thank you, Roxy. Yes. Doing this. Thank you so much. And also, we have a few more items for baby dog, Governor. Goodness gracious. Jennifer, you're supposed to get up there. Jennifer. Happy birthday, sweet girl. Okay. Oh, she says, oh, we'll oh, no, don't, just put it right on her. She's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you keys to the county keys. here. That's the keys to the county for baby dog. Over here. And there's a little for you. We'll set that in 
in your chair with you. <laughs> and a happy birthday, Cookie. Oh, it's really tasty, huh? It's going to be so good. Y'all not. And a pup cake. You bought another pup cake. Our meeting is fun. I, I see what y'all been doing down here all this time. Y'all are having too much fun. That's all there is to it. No, it's really great. Really great. Thank y'all so much. Thank you in every way. Go ahead, Governor. You've got the floor. Well, let me just say this real quick about this little thing. She makes all of us smile, and she loves everybody. I've said it a million times. No message on the planet could be better than that for all of us. And so at the end of the day, if we'll just keep that thought, and this last couple of years has been tough. I was going to say dog tough, but they've been really tough. And on all of us, many, many of you have without any question, if not all, have run to the fire over and over and over. And you need to be commended in every way possible. And I love you with all my soul. You know, it's never meant anything to me from the standpoint of Democrat, Republican, independents. It doesn't mean anything to baby doll. See, I've always thought that there's enough people on the outside throwing enough rocks at us that we don't need to throw rocks at one another. But with all that being said, let me just tell you this very quickly. This Amendment 2 deal is, and I can't imagine, and I'm saying this, when you're thinking about COVID and you're thinking about the state that was really on hard times and now the state's got these surpluses and all this kind of stuff, really and truly, it's a big statement to say this is the biggest moment of my governorship. I will promise you that. Because this can tear us all to pieces. And you mark it down, and I believe this with all in me. For the people out there, in the beginning, they just didn't know. And they were just tricked, hoodwinked, to believe that this was nothing about, about being about the car tax. Well, it doesn't really have anything to do with the car tax when it really boils right down to it. It has everything to do with getting rid of the, you know, changing the Constitution. And literally... At that point in time, putting all the control in the world in Charleston. And, and who knows that that may not be a very difficult thing at some point in time. I'll promise you at the end of the day, dupe does happen. And when it happens, if literally you do not have control of your county, you'll be in real trouble. Real, real trouble. Now, if you think about the Santa Claus deal. First you believe in Santa, then you don't, before you know it, you are Santa. Think about it. From the standpoint of where I've been, really and truly, when this all came to a head, we offered a 10% tax cut to all the people. People that were really hurting with inflation, $5 gas, and who knows what it could be. And grocery prices off the chart. We said, let's give some money back now, right now. And the House passed it in a day, and then immediately it just stopped. And I thought, what on God's earth is going on? And the deeper I dug, the more it smelled. Now, like it or not like it, but the absolute definition of the swamp is lobbyists giving stuff to people that are legislatures to get votes for some level of special interest. At the end of the day, the car tax is, off the, is completely off the equation now, or out, of the, out of the picture. You'll get a rebate that will absolutely pay you dollar for dollar, dime for dime, back for every penny of your car tax. So that's gone. Then really and truly it becomes just real simple. Do we want to help the giant corporations? Oh, we want giant corporations here. We want out-of-state corporations here. But my whole thing is, for God's sakes, a living. How in the world can we ignore you? How can we do that? And absolutely it's wrong to couch this and say, vote for this because you'll get rid of your car tax when that didn't really have doodly to do with it. Basically, you were changing the Constitution forever. 
and literally you're giving control away from your county. And when the wheels really flew off, lots of bad things had happened. Now this county commission has really stood up and Kent's gone buck crazy and that's really good. But they have done marvelous. And literally, I've been all over the place sitting on this crazy stool, and these babies are strong, believe me. And, but I can tell you that the simplest way in the world that I could ever explain Amendment 2 is that, first of all, it does, has nothing to do with the car tax, it has everything to do with changing the Constitution. It basically stabs a stake in the heart forevermore of the personal income tax. And you may think, well, why am I interested in that? Because every single place that's on a pathway to get rid of the personal income tax, every place grows. We need people here. You're talking to about Jim Justice. Jim Justice, absolutely. We brought Berkshire Hathaway and New Corps and Green Power and on and on and on. Nobody, nobody has asked Jim Justice, you know, if you would get rid of that machinery and inventory tax, we'd come to West Virginia. Then why are we doing it? And the answer is one word, swamp. That's the only reason that there could possibly be. We're turning our back on our people. And that's really bad to me. Really, really, really bad. Now Bobby Pruitt down at Marshall had it just perfect. He said, here's the whole deal. He said, all of you give me your wallets and give me all your money. And I am a bunch of politicians, and we'll promise we'll give it back. Listen, they may have tricked you on the car tax, but you're not dummies. You're smart, great, great people. And the last thing that Baby Dog and I'd tell you is just this, and, that, and put this in the bank. You're faith-based. You're absolutely appreciative, loving, community people, low crime, all the goodness, craftsmen. You're located within a rock throw of two-thirds of the population of this country, four unbelievably se unbelievable seasons. You have the greatest of the greatest of the greatest, and you are just that. And don't let anybody ever, ever try to take that away. We were last and last and last. Now we're doing pretty dead gum good, but if we don't watch out, we can blow our blooming legs off. We've got to shoot this down, and we've got to shoot it down right now. And we all may have gotten late to the party because the powers to be that are pushing this were out there for a year pushing it, and it seemed benign, but really it's very toxic. We've got to shoot it down. But you now, as disciples, have got to get busy. Because this has got to go. That's all there is to it. Now, last of my last, think about this. First, the people didn't know. Now they know. And now a lot of them are mad. Because you got tricked. If you're not mad, you mark it down. And remember this day forever. Because this big guy is sitting there with a bulldog, of all things. A bulldog with a, a birthday hat on. A bulldog that's named honorary, what was, I'm sorry? First responder. First responder. First responder. Okay. Now, and a bulldog that has the same eating habits as her dad. <laughs> now just think about it. I'm going to tell you to God above, remember this moment. If you're not mad now, you will be. You'll be really, really mad someday. Now, I may be long gone as your governor, but you remember this guy that was sitting on this telling you don't do this. I'm telling you, it would benefit my companies to the tune of millions, and I'm telling you, don't do it. You better get busy. You've only got a few days left. And if this thing goes poof and it passes, we'll be in real trouble. God bless each and every one of you in every way. I love you more than you'll ever know. Thank you for having me, and thank you for all this stuff for Baby Dog. <laughs>
Governor, uh, on behalf of Sheriff Rutherford and the Kanawha County Sheriff's Department, it really wouldn't be truly happening uh, if we didn't give you this uh, honorary uh, Deputy Sheriff's badge uh, for the work that Baby Dog has done. But we want you to have this as a, a token of our appreciation for everything you do. I'll try. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Come on up, Jeremy. Jeremy Yost is our uh, local Deputy Sheriff's Association president. So to show you uh, that it's just not uh, words um, or cheap talk, but uh, most of the organizations, law enforcement organizations across the state of West Virginia are supporting what you're doing and want to thank you on behalf of all the first responders. There's plenty of them here uh, with us, but we're standing united. There may be a few that maybe has a different stance, but for the most part, on behalf locally, we have uh, Jeremy Yost. He's our president. He's got a letter uh, officially opposing Amendment 2 and how detrimental it would be to uh, first responders. Also, we have a, one from the local St. Albans Fraternal Order of Police uh, opposing Amendment 2. Start in order. Uh, I told you you are smart people. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the West Virginia Sheriff's Associations, we uh, we had our uh, training and meeting and conference up in Ogilvy Park. And that was a topic of discussion. And at the end of the day, uh, the West Virginia Sheriff's Associ Association took uh, uh, a proud moment to go ahead and write a letter uh, opposing Amendment 2 as well. So you have the West Virginia Sheriff's Association. You have the West Virginia Fraternal Order of Police uh, and all of its members, over 3,000 and some, uh, that are opposing Amendment 2. And the West Virginia Chiefs of Police. Uh, we have been busy. Obviously, a lot of people didn't know a lot of this was going on, but every every uh, conference or every training or every meeting that we went to, this, is, this has been a hot topic and a uh, valid discussion that obviously I think we got the word out. We did... Uh, Get, get enough rally and support, I think, in time. So the West Virginia Chiefs of Police also oppose Amendment 2 and support what you have done and carrying the message and the banner forward. So we want to thank you on behalf of all law enforcement. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, you may, you know me well enough to know and I don't blow smoke at anybody. I mean, anybody that carry a bulldog into the state of state address and show her hind end to Bette Midler, I mean, was apt to about do anything, you know. But I don't blow smoke at people. And I really pride myself with all in me to not make mistakes, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I'll treasure these forever because I believe in you and I mean it when I tell you for crying out loud the dumbest statement in all of America had to be, let's defund the police. How could it possibly ever have been any dumber than that? And so, so literally, at the end of the day, I'll treasure these forever. And I really appreciate all you all do. And thanks again for every last breath that you guys take and all the great work that all of you have done. And thanks for thinking about a little baby dog, too. Well, the, the folks that are responsible for this case would love to meet her and get a photo. Roxy. You can do anything you'd like to do. Uh, 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 I just hate to be taking up your time here. Right? Oh, we got, we got the time. Yeah. We appreciate you being here. We've got the time. Oh, okay, my, let my me. Heart. I've got, I've got too many things here. Hold on. Hold on here. Y'all help me just a little bit. All right. You get the keys to the city. Okay, you get all the letters. And baby, I got to watch her on this. 
Uh, okay. Turn around here, Captain America. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why don't you just kneel down there? Okay. 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 <laughs> Now you need to tilt it, tilt, tilt it a little bit. <laughs> so y'all know they just cut me right out of the <laughs> yeah. street. That's funny. Governor, we've got a few more comments. We know you have to go. No, no, I'm, I'm here with you. Okay. Commissioner Slane. No, Ben. We good? All right. Governor, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you coming here and uh, not just for your remarks today, but for all the hard work that you've put in on behalf of our first responders, on behalf of local government. Uh, you know, the, the people that wrote the Constitution well over a century ago, they were smart. They were really smart. They did not want to leave funding to the political whim of the legislature. They wanted local government funded, our first responders funded, our law enforcement funded. They wanted these critical life-saving services funded. And that's why it's in the Constitution. They were well ahead of their time. And so here we are you know, all these years later, and they're trying to do exactly what the folks who wrote the Constitution tried to prevent. They want to make it political. They want it bargained in the back room of the Capitol. Uh, can you imagine somebody in the, in the northern part of the state deciding how many cruisers you guys get? Uh, somebody in the eastern panel deciding how many fire trucks we're going to have, how many ambulances we're going to have? That's what local control is about. Now, they were big proponents until recent when they realized they could give uh, a big corporate tax giveaway. The fact that you've opposed this, despite the obvious interest that you would have if it passes, uh, is, is pretty remarkable. And I can, I can say on behalf of all of us in Kanawha County, and I can personally tell you, I'd much rather be with you than against you. <laughs> well, listen, Ben, Ben, Ben recruited me. <laughs> Good man. Good, good man. Thank you. Well, we appreciate all you're doing, and um, I think it's going to fail. I think it's going to fail, and it's going to fail because of all of your efforts and getting the message out in every corner of the state. And thank you very much. Appreciate it. I think it's going to fail, too. And I want it to fail bad because they need to hear you. They need to hear your soul speak. And that's why... I need you really bad, but it's has been a long, a lot, lot more than me. I mean, look what these great people have done right here. Look what all of you've done. I mean, for crying out loud, you know, I'm just proud to, and my dad would say it perfectly. I'm really just proud and honored to be able to have been able to fly with you. It's really, really, really been an honor. You're the best. That's all there is to it. You get it right if you have a chance to get it right. And this one, you're getting it right. I'm confident of that. Governor, there's uh, been one thing that I want to clear up. I've listened to one of the criticisms that uh, you first you were for this and then you were against it. I remember that very specifically. I was there. I was there with Bray Carey and the Senate President. And what happened to the promise to local government that they would never take the constitutional protection away. That was the original deal and I'm confident because they love to say when they think I've said something wrong, if I'm wrong on that, I'm sure I'll hear from them. And by the way, we have not yet heard one word saying that anything in our original resolution about this was wrong. Not a word, not a comma, maybe had a misspelling maybe, but that's about it. Now. This county commission, we may not do everything right, but about 33% of our total budget, 33% goes to public safety. I'll put that up against any government anywhere. Tonight, the commission will vote tonight. Governor, that's why this room's full of firefighters. We will 
honorably have the chance, with great honor on our part, to provide funding because they need it. And that's where this money comes from. It comes from the tax base. Now, if someone wants to give away 70% of the tax base and hope that someday maybe it'll be there on a flat budget that'll last, last forever, I disagree with that. But one thing I do know, today they're protected. Our first responders are protected against someone other than local government answering their call. And when they come in here and ask, like Chief McGee or Chief White, Chief Johnson, anybody that comes in here and asks for a fire truck or a radio or something, they get to talk to us. We know what it's like to talk to someone that really, what happened? You can't vote against them. They don't live here. So this is serious. The governor has wise counsel. Uh, I believe what the governor says. I'm also personally convinced that the income tax is a better job creator. But the real issue for first responders, police officers, firefighters, paramedics, 911 people, is whether or not you get to control your destiny or somebody from another county. So that's why we've opposed it. And I know there's great political risk in this. There's people still hiding out from this. The governor, I heard the other day a little snarky comment. They said, well, how do you debate a bulldog? You know what I said? Which one? <laughs> Which one, Governor that's, Justice? That's pretty flattering. Well, <laughs> first of all, the they'd, they'd probably have a better shot with this bulldog. Well, I think both of you are tough. So, it, it, as the governor says, at the end of the day, this is really simple. It's up to the voters. We understand that. But it's also important that you that do the job, whether you're career firefighters or a volunteer, our deputies, our municipal police, everyone who's involved in public safety, you can see this for what it is. And it is important, and it will affect you, and it will affect the pa public safety is on the ballot in West Virginia. Public safety is on the ballot. I know how I'm going to vote. And Governor Justice, thank you for your tireless efforts for our first responders. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so you want... Absolutely. Governor, thank you so much for coming here uh, with your presence and, and baby dog as well. Happy birthday. But Governor, something else that happened just in this room 11 months ago, this Kanawha County Commission that you see before you discussed at a public meeting the questions and concerns that we had on Amendment 2. And for months, the questions were not answered with us. It was like we were screaming into a brick wall. And I want to thank you for taking the political risk, as Commissioner Carper said, to come out and tell the truth. The truth is that Amendment 2 can drastically reduce the funding for the counties and our volunteer fire departments, our police officers, our EMTs, our telecommunicators with 911. The list goes on. And there's something that you and I share together is that we're both Republican and I'm conservative. And I came out against Amendment 2 for the exact reasons that it is not conservative to take power away from local government and centralize it. It is not conservative to take away funding essentially for our first responders and our police officers who risk their lives every single day protecting the citizens and people of our state. Yet here we are at a conundrum of asking ourselves that we're going to not only be able to eliminate the tax on, on an individual if we move forward voting yes. Well, that is not true, and you have proven that that's not true. As Commissioner Carper said, if we want to bring people here, we need to reduce and eventually eliminate the income tax. I want to thank you for taking that charge. I want to thank you for defending counties, our volunteers, our first responders, and everything that you have done in your capacity, we are very grateful. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I, I mean, it's so easy. There's been so many. I mean, you, you're, you're passing on way too many accolades to me. But really, the, the thing that still just blows me away is when in the world did Republicans, Lance, myself, when in the world did Republicans become in opposition to cutting taxes? I mean, cutting your personal income tax. 
I mean, we had people really hurting, and they're still really hurting with inflation, and we could have put money right back in their hands. And not only that, they would have become a stimulus package for us because they'd spend the money here. Big giant corporations may very well take the money out of state, and you may never see it. There's so many things. But on top of all that, when did especially Republicans decide that local control is not best? The best control is Charleston control or D.C. control. I don't get it. And I really don't think this is driven by the masses of the Republicans in the legislature. It's driven by a few that are pushing and bullying and threatening and everything else. Well, I don't do that at all. And I'll just say to you just this. If this thing passes, if it passes, I'll still try with all in me every day to work with everybody, and I'll be respectful of the fact that y'all and everybody passed this. I'll know how I voted in baby dog, but absolutely, I'll be so respectful, it's unbelievable. But the thing I will do, in a very short time, I won't be your governor. And I promise you, to God above, I will do this. I will see you in Walmart somewhere, and I'll roll right up to you and say, I told you so, because this will be bad, bad stuff. So let's be respectful of all. I don't understand what's going on at all. It doesn't make, not make one bit of sense. But really, to Lance and Kent and Ben, they're friends. They're good people. And they've done you one hell of a job. That's all there is to it. This is our number one county, and they're doing you a hell of a job. And you should be very, very thankful to have them. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Again, remember, I'm the one that doesn't blow smoke. I don't blow smoke at anybody. These are great people right here, and I thank you all. The governor has uh, limited time for press availability. Ken, there's one thing I need to say before we sure. go there. The governor and I, thank you. The, gov the governor and I have traveled. We've had 25 community meetings around the state one end of the state to the other, been on the road for about four weeks. It comes down to a real simple point. Real simple. Ninety years ago, the people of West Virginia voted to make a guaranteed revenue stream for the counties. Now, ninety years later, we're trying to politicize public safety. And I'll say this, when you call 911, you don't ask the person that shows up if they're a Republican or a Democrat. You're glad they showed up. So this is a issue that goes far beyond party politics, and I have watched the governor for four weeks travel this state from one end to the other. Vote no on Amendment 2, and now I'm going to put my CPA Secretary of Revenue hat on. This is a disaster for the state's budget. Your funding will be at risk, I promise you, if this Amendment 2 passes. Keep your revenue, keep your constitutional guarantee, and vote no on Amendment 2. Is everybody good? I think, you I think you got a couple of questions. Okay.
I just appreciate it. It really is because that's what we are. I mean, it just exemplifies West Virginia. And, and so, so good night, and, uh, and I promise you she'll be thankful. <laughs> um, I know that it said in the, I think it said in the meeting packet that you were going to talk about roads. Was it, did you have anything to say about that? Or? I didn't know I was going to talk or about was that. Maybe, maybe somebody but, along the chain of command on my end. Well, that. I think yeah. we're going to mention that later. We're going to talk about how many roads they fixed in Kanawha County. The, oh, okay. The, the governor's, governor's road mentioned. to prosperity. The first road to prosperity the Governor Justice did was in Kanawha County. Yeah. It was the airport road. Tomorrow, they'll be opening up one of the bridges in the St. Albans area. Additionally, I believe, Governor, under your roads for prosperity, you've completed over 400 repairs of roads in Kanawha County. Right. So we're here to thank you for that. We're right. then. 412. 421 projects in Kanawha County since this governor has been in office for $368 million. And tomorrow, 2 30, the Montrose St. Albans Bridge 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 yeah. cutting will be tomorrow. As, you tell you. as important as we thought that was, then we found out it was baby dog's birthday, so we can then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me add just one little thought and it's just this. For the first day, Two things that absolutely are imperative, absolute, hands down, you got to have. you got to have a place where children can go to school. And I personally believe this. I really do. If you go out, I mean, I'm sure our test scores aren't what they need to do. And sure, we've got improvement. And sure, we want to do more and more and more we possibly can to make more improvement in education. Absolutely. I'm the guy that wants to make education our centerpiece. And with all that, why? Because it helps us change our image. It brings more folks to us. And with all that, the second thing, in the standard of life, is you've got to have roads. Now, we can say what we want, but just a few years back, we couldn't get to the convenience store. Now your, your problem is orange cones all over the place. So we've really made headway. And, and we want to keep making headway. And, and you know, and like I said before, in all county is the biggest, and absolutely we want to make the most headway right here. Okay. And um, just last question. Speaking of education, did you hear about what happened in Logan County today? And I, I, I do not know what's happened in Logan County today. Um, <laughs> so, the state um, is taking over the board of education. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Look. We got problems. There's no question we've got problems with the problems with education. And there's no question that we want to make it better. The one thing we don't want to do that I, I am opposed to doing all the time is standing up on a soapbox and, and trying to make a scene and whatever it may be. Now look, listen to me on this, please. I'm in schools all the time. You know, I coach, I'm proud to, to coach. But from the standpoint that I would challenge all y'all, get involved with the kids. They need you. They really, really, really need you. But I just think about this. You go, whether it be Logan County, Kanawha County, Calvary County, doesn't really matter. You go to any small school or big school, and you find your fourth graders or third graders and say, what do you think of your teacher? I will promise you, overwhelmingly, they'll say, oh, we love Miss Allen. And then, Go right around in your community and say, what do you think of your school? And all of them will have an incredible, or a lot in the majority, will have an incredible pride in the school. Now, if that be the case, and I hate to put it this way, but we ain't getting it all bad if that's the case. If the kids love their teachers and we love our schools, it's a long ways from being all bad. And so... So with that all, all that being said, we got a lot, lot, lot to do to get better, and we want to continue to get better in every way. But, uh, but we got a lot of good going on too. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you. Anyone else? This is a school night. Baby dogs got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Governor, I think that's done. Thank you so right. much. Thank right. you, Governor. Thank you.